It won't be up on the screen, but you can listen to God's Word from Luke chapter 2, or follow it along in your Bible, reading from verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. On earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angel had left them and gone back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this amazing thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Let's bow in prayer. Father God, I thank you that we too have heard your message, that we too have heard of the Saviour who came. And this morning, Lord, as we take a few moments just to open your word and, and to consider again the shepherds, may we feel, be filled with wonder and joy. May we hear your call. May you stir our hearts this Christmas time to be people who care, to be people who love, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, speak to us again from your word afresh. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Christmas season has begun. Who's braved the shocks? Anyone? God bless you. Yes. The carols are playing, the tinsel's up, the bargains are happening, 20% off this, 15% off that, and Boxing Day will be even cheaper, and God bless you, because we've got to go back to the shop again after Christmas. Apparently, we can't cope. This morning we're looking at some shepherds. They lived it out nearby in the fields, looking after sheep. They watched over them, they protected them, and Jesus was coming, but they had no idea. In Australia, we have shepherds, but they don't live with the sheep. The sheep live with us. No doubt when we invest, we've seen a couple of sheep. Or two. Yes, there, thank you for a nod. Yeah, I see that nod. Yeah. But we don't watch over sheep. We round them up, don't we? So picture this scene. All is quiet. Some of the guys are no doubt asleep. Boris down the end is no doubt snoring. Then all of a sudden, an angel appears. And the angel's message is, don't be afraid. Of course. They're blinded by the glory of God, and there's an angel standing there speaking to them. Uh, excuse me, fellas, don't be afraid. I'll be afraid. Fear not. Fear not. God comes to us this morning again with that great message. Fear not. Give me your worries and give me your fears, for God is big enough to handle. For he brings the good news that will bring great joy. Good news. We all need that, don't we? Just slip on your TV, crank up the computer. We need some good news. Christ the Lord has come. God wants to know us. You're significant and important to Him. You're part of His plan. 
Let us make him known. Jesus was born in Bethlehem to fulfill God's promise to David. For God kept his commands, he keeps his promises, for God's word is true and faithful. And Jesus is lying there in a feeding trough wrapped in strips of cloth. No room was left. And so they went to his knee. He came, but not many received him. They did not recognize him. So when the Lord came, he came as one of those that others don't recognize. Others might miss, but don't miss him. Don't miss Jesus. Don't overlook him. Don't forget him. For he hasn't forgotten me and he hasn't forgotten you. The proclamation of glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace and goodwill to all. Do you need some peace and goodwill? Let's show it by being nice to people. Even when they don't deserve it. Show some mercy, show some love, show some grace this Christmas time. If you're having trouble with forgiveness and peace and goodwill, then look again to Jesus. Look beyond the manger and see a cross on a hill. But Jesus is there for you. For he was indeed the good shepherd. And Jesus calls us as his believers to shepherd each other, to guide the flock, to protect it, to be his church. Let us not drive people away, but welcome them in and come alongside them, because there's plenty of room. When the angels left the shepherds, I suspect they all looked at each other, they're all a bit dazed. No doubt a few conversations went on. Hey guys, did you see what I saw? Maybe they discussed things for a bit. And then they needed to make a decision. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 15 and 16, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The shepherds acted on what they had heard. They went to see, hey, is this true? And they found Jesus just as they were told. This baby lying in a manger with Mary and Joseph. Don't miss God's message to you. Don't miss when God speaks. Don't miss the point. God speaks to us and he does so with a desire to motivate us, encourage us, renew our passion, renew our focus. What often happens to us is that we often think, well, was that God speaking to me or not? And so we become afraid of what others may think. We're afraid that what God may have told us may not work. What, did I hear God? Or was I wrong? We get sidetracked. We get off on some tangent and miss the point. How many of us go through Christmas, this Christmas season, celebrating the celebration and not the Savior? Sometimes we don't like what God is telling us. We don't like it because it means change. It means doing something new or different. Maybe doing something that we may not like doing. When God speaks, it's important that we take appropriate action. The message of Christmas calls us to action, friends. For some, God is calling you to give your life to Him. He's not looking for your admiration. He's not calling for your approval. He's calling for your heart and life and service. Lord Jesus, I surrender to you.
He came for me and he came for you. And he went to a cross to set us free. For others, God is calling us to turn away from something you know is wrong. Most people don't need to be told what they should stop doing. They know it. Maybe God's calling you to mend a relationship. Maybe he's calling you to help somebody in need. Maybe he's calling you to invite someone to our carols next Sunday night. Maybe he's calling you to stop living in the past and embrace the now and the future. Maybe he's urging you to ask for help. Ask for help. Maybe he's calling you to some bold action to do something, give something, begin something, start something. Let us celebrate the one who came this Christmas time and faithfully celebrate him and find him as the shepherds did. Hear the whisper of his spirit. Hear the message. Follow the example of the shepherds who dared to act on what God had told them. On the screen there, God uses the unlikely to do the unimaginable. God uses the unlikely to do the unimaginable. So the shepherds were available to hear the message. They responded appropriately to that message. And when they did, they discovered a wonder that changed their lives. It was a wonder so great that they couldn't help but tell everyone about what they saw and what they discovered. These shy, isolated, probably smelly shepherds were stopping strangers in the street and telling them about this baby that they had discovered and that the angels had arrived and that he had come. Emmanuel, God with us, Christ the Lord. Maybe most of them thought they were crazy, but that didn't change their message. In Luke 2, verse 20, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which is just as they had been told. No doubt these shepherds still had struggles, still had bad days, still had arguments. But what a change in these shepherds of old. <coughs> Their hearts. They have found a joy that the world cannot deliver and cannot deny. They found a wholeness that they could not achieve any other way. They found peace. These men found a love that no person could ever give them. They found the Lord. They found the Lord. They never forgot. Their lives have changed ever because of what they saw in Bethlehem. God was faithful to his word. Who are we shepherding? Who are we caring for? Who are we telling? Who are we serving? Let us be faithful disciples of him. In the book of 1 Peter, over in the back of the New Testament, chapter 5, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Look for opportunities to serve. Respond to those needs around us. There are many opportunities, especially this time of year. But an important part of being a servant is responding to immediate needs of those around us. Don't expect thanks for what you do, but go about your work quietly and with little acknowledgement. Faithfully serving God. God the Father sees everything, doesn't He? Let us remain faithful. Friends, satisfaction comes from watching 
our service and they Friends, satisfaction comes from watching what our service enables others to achieve. Jesus once said that when you give, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. In other words, don't use your service for self-gratification. We all need someone to believe in us. We all need someone to see the best in us. God knew the shepherds would not let him down. And he chose them. Who's counting on you and who's counting on me? Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's a friend or neighbour. Maybe it's someone nearby you in a seat this morning. Who's counting on you? Who's counting on me? Guide their life. Guide their life. Be a positive influence. Share your message of hope. See the faith of God in those around you. Look for God's presence at work and celebrate them. Some of the greatest discoveries happen right in front of us. Adjust your focus. Swallow your fears like the shepherds. Move ahead. Take another look. Act. Go. See a life changed. A gentleman by the name of George D. Mistral was walking his dog one day and the dog ran off into some long grass and when George finally caught up with his dog he was covered in burrs and his fur was all tangled. When they got home, poor George could have killed that dog as he sat there picking out these prickles and cutting the fur. But no, curiously, he took one of these cuttings of fur and put it under his microscope and looked at the interesting characteristics of this fur. This moment in life changes, changed George forever. But he ultimately invented the Velcro. Don't we love Velcro? Where's our grey nomads? Don't we love Velcro? <laughs> Maybe you've got it on your shoes this morning. They were quite fashionable a few years ago. Luke 2.20, as we finish today. The shepherds. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been taught. Out of their uncertainty, out of their fear, came hope and joy. Make a difference for somebody this Christmas season as we shine for Jesus, our hope and Savior. God bless you. Amen. Thanks, Joe.